Okay guys, today we're gonna be making a loaf of bread. Um, I got the recipe off Keto Connect. So, I'm gonna just do my best to remember it because I don't feel like opening my laptop. Okay, so to start off with, they want you to get six eggs and split them. Like, so you have your egg yolks, I don't know how well you can see it, but you have your egg yolks here, and then I have my egg whites over here, because you're going to beat your egg whites to a big, fluffy, stiff peak. This recipe does call for cream of tartar. It also calls for a cup and a half of almond flour. This technically isn't the brand I use. I actually get it off nuts.com, but I've just been refilling this bag because it's like my new storage for it. You are gonna need a pinch of salt, four tablespoons of melted butter, and a three teaspoons of baking powder. There we go, baking powder. Oh, and it's like a quarter teaspoon of the cream of tartar. All right, so first things first, you're going to add your quarter teaspoon of the cream of tartar into your egg whites and a pinch of salt. And then you are going to mix it for about a minute or two on high speed just to get it, you know, those stiff peaks. Okay guys, now I did beat my egg whites. I did it on high for like maybe a minute and a half, two minutes. You want pretty much this consistency, you know, a nice stiff where it like dollops like that. So now what the recipe tells you to do is you're supposed to add six drops of stevia. I'm using Splenda, which I forgot to mention, um, just because it's what I have on hand. I just put a few squirts in. I'm gonna add my melted butter. Let me grab my spatula, wherever it may have gone. Just to get all that butter out of there. So I've got my butter in there. Um, it says three teaspoons of baking powder, so that's one, two, Oops, I need a whole teaspoon there, okay, and that's three level teaspoons. I'm going to start folding this in together, and we are going to add the almond flour. If you don't add the sweetener, the bread does get this kind of eggy taste to it. I learned that from a batch that I made. It also says that while you're mixing this, you want to add a third of the egg whites. I think it's because if you try to mix the entire egg whites into this dry lumpiness, you're going to flatten out the egg whites and then it won't have that fluff to it. So you just kind of add some of the egg whites, about a third, and just start kind of mixing it in there. I suck, so I'm just kind of like trying to get it done. I forget what size pan it said. I think it was like an eight by 14 or something like a loaf pan pretty much so now with about a third of the egg whites mixed you're getting more of this kind of consistency which is still pretty lumpy so I'm gonna spread it out and slowly add the rest of your egg whites a little bit at a time so you don't completely flatten you know lose the bubbles, the fluff, because you want the fluff for the rise. Just scraping it off the sides there. And just add a little bit at a time. 
Now your oven is going to be preheated to 375. And you can add this. I'm actually thinking I'm probably going to make some other ones today just because I'm going to try a few different things with them. I want to see if maybe I can do like a garlic or something or add some cheese to it. Because I mean, you can already do those cheese biscuits, so this shouldn't be too much more difficult. Make some kind of like cheese loaf. I'm going to get all those egg whites off sides there. Now on the website it tells you to have mixed all this in a food processor. I don't really have one of those so I'm just kind of folding it in my way. I mean if you have a food processor I guess you could use that but if you're trying to keep the fluff of this, I don't see how a food processor would be ideal. But then again, I don't own one, so I'm not, I don't think I've ever owned one, so I don't know how those work. I just got lucky enough to finally get my KitchenAid this year. But yeah, once you fold it in, you're going to pour it into your uh, pan and put it in the oven. I lined my pan with parchment paper so everything could just be pulled out when it's ready. So this will go in at 375 for 30 minutes. And then you will get your end result. I'm actually just going to scrape all this off to get it all in because I want all of my batter in here. And I'll show you what it looks like in the pan in just a second. Ooh. Not tap that too much. So this is pretty much what it looks like going in. I think this would be probably really good to do maybe a cheddar bread or something with. Now while I put this in, I'm going to show you guys one that I have pulled out. Now this is what the bread looks like when it comes out of the oven. Okay, now this is one that I pulled out of the oven just a little while ago. Sorry, I have some bacon wrapped hot dogs there because I'm kind of meal prepping today. Um, I sliced it up. And as you can see, it's like a smaller piece of bread. It's not too bad. Um, but, I mean, it's got a nice texture to it. I'm actually, I sliced this up because I'm going to turn this into French toast. Because we eat French toast. <laughs> and this is a good way to not lose that in our lives. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the recipe. And this is what it comes out like. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe so you can see more videos like this. Also check out the video on how we make French toast with this. Hope you guys have a great day, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a comment.